Shalom, Most High Christ bless you. It's Bishop Kanai with Israel Nighting Christ. I'm here for the grand opening of a new school here in Orlando, Florida at 5380 Silver Star Road, 32808. So come out, join us, come learn the will of God and keep his commandments. With that we say Shalom. Read verse 1 for me. Amos chapter 7 and verse 1. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter grove. And lo, it was in the latter grove after the king's mourn. So it says, Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers, I mean grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. So the latter growth is talking about the feast of Ingarin. The shooting up of the last harvest, he sent grasshoppers in. And the grasshoppers began to eat up all the vegetation. Uh, and lo, it was a larry growth after the mo after the king's mowing. So after they cleared the, the, the land from the from that first harvest, then the latter growth come up, those grasshoppers came in and began to eat up the food. Read on. And it came to pass that when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. The Lord repented for this. It shall not be, saith the Lord. So it says, and it came to pass that when they had made an end of the eating of the grass of the land, then I said, O Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee. What happened? Because in the latter growth, or the, latter, the second harvest of the year, all that stuff that's reaped up is to make it through the winter into the following season. So what happened now? The grasshoppers ate up and destroyed it. Now they're praying to God and said, God, forgive me. And God said in verse 3, The Lord repented for this. It shall not be, said the Lord. The God said, okay, you said you're sorry. Okay, cool. I forgive you. God is long-suffering. We'll jump on down to verse 7. Verse 7, thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. So the vision that Amos had, Amos had, God was standing on a wall with a plumb line. A plumb line is a line that has a weight at the bottom that gives you a straight line. It's used, it's used a lot of time in masonry work like that, so it'll give you a straight line. So he, in his vision, he sees God standing with a plumb line, straight down. Read on. And the Lord said unto me, Abel, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. You know? And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. God said, I had enough now. I put, I put that plumb line down, make, I'm making a straight line, and I'm no longer turning back, and I ain't going to bend for you here and bend for you there. I done, did that already now. Now I'm going to judge you, Israel. I had enough of you. You came to me crying about it. I was, I was punishing you, but you didn't hear. You said, I'm sorry, and I said, okay. And I, what do you do? You go back to the same thing again, damn it. Okay, then, no more. Plumb line is set. Structure is going to pass, and that's it. And there's no turning back now. Now you're just going to have to go do it. And then came Nebuchadnezzar. Genesis. The book of Genesis. Chapter, what did I ask you for again? You got it? Genesis, chapter 3, and verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. Now this is after Adam and uh, Eve got Adam to take of the tree of the men. What's it called? Fruit of the tree? I, I, no, no, no. The other tree. Yeah, give me the other tree. I'm sorry. The tree of good and evil. Thank you. I can put your scripture. Yeah, tree of good and evil. So now read that verse again. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. It says, Behold, the man is referred to Adam. He has become one of us. What does he mean, Adam has become one of us? Uh, 
Well, yeah. Say it again. Take the word difference out. Take the word difference out of your statement. All right. Because he didn't know the difference. That's not the right. He said he's become one of us. He knows evil now. He was never supposed to learn evil. He said he knows it. Isaiah 45. Post, we'll come right back here. Isaiah 45 and 7 and Ecclesiastes. The book of Isaiah. Was it again Ecclesiastes 9 and something like that? Upright? Yeah. 921. Yeah. Isaiah. What do you want? 44? 45 7. I'm sorry. 45 and 7. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So we know that God said, I create good and evil. He said, I created it, but man, you was never supposed to learn that. Give me that now to ask for. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that God has made man upright. But they have sought out many inventions. He said, I made God, and he said, God made man to be up, upright. He made us to be perfect, keeping his laws, but we sought out many inventions. We sought out sin. So let's go back again to um, 22. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Now listen up. I want y'all paying good attention about Adam. Listen. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. He says, This man, Adam, has become one of us. Now he knows good and evil. Read on. To know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Read on. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So watch this. And the Lord, it says, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become one of us. To know good and evil. Now he knows good and evil now. Look what he says. Lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life. He said, now this man knows good and evil. Now he might want to try to grab onto the tree of life. Grab, now I'm going to explain the tree of life in a second. He's going to want to grab hold of the tree of life. And it says what? It says, also a tree of life and eat and live forever because the tree of life is immortality which is the commandments he said now that he know evil he gonna want to grab onto that tree of life no Adam no grab now he says you got to go verse 23 therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken he said you gonna work now Adam you gonna till the ground I don't want you to grab on the tree of life now you got to serve punishment first. You're going to get punished for what you did. Everybody want to grab on a tree of life after they've done what they did was wrong. Everybody looking for Jesus. Now God is a long-suffering part, don't get me wrong. But Adam's situation was a far different. Because he, he, he breathed the, 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 light, the, the breath of life into Adam. From us all, this righteous nation of Israel was to spawn from him. Much was put on Adam's shoulders. It's different somebody coming here right now. You know, who's been here in three months? It's true, three months. All right, like this brother right here. Three months right here. Uh, you know, we laugh a little bit. He's married to Edomite. Well, no, he fornicated with Edomite. You know, but you know, not... If he told me he got an Edomite, it's a big difference now. I ain't, his, that, the whole room would change the whole direction because you expect more of him. Or me or whoever it might be. Adam had a lot of weight on his shoulder. And Adam, damn it, I made you after my image. I gave you dominion over everything. Every beast and everything on earth. And you went and so deal with the other nations? Nah. Nah. Give me Luke 12. We're going to come right back here. Nah, Adam. It doesn't work like that. You know, don't let him even grab onto that tree of life right now unless he live forever. He got to go do something. Uh, 1248. Luke chapter 12 and 
chapter 12 and verse 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. But to whomsoever much is given, of him shall much require. And to, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much require. Adam, much was given to you. So we're asking much more from you. That's why God said, nah, no, 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 no. Let's see, try to grab him to the tree of life. Nah, put him out the garden. He had to go. You had it all. And it's like how people are today. You give everything and they un we are some ungrateful wretches of a people, man. Esau has been trying to kill us. The next has been trying to kill us from the beginning of time. And today we still want to be among them. Still want to marry them. Blonde their hair. Bleach their skin. God looking like, after I chose you over all things of earth, you telling me you looking for them recessive genes? You looking for them people to, like, that's who you look up to? Like, there's some guys, oh, man, man. Man, we're destroyed. We're destroyed people. So he told them, let's go back to um, Genesis. <clears throat> Genesis. Let me catch up with you, uh, officer. You move too fast. Uh, let's explain some of that now. So we said, uh, verse 22. Verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life. Hold and, it. I'm sorry, finish your thought. Take also of the tree of life, and eat. And live forever. Hold this second Ezra the eighth chapter. Uh, there's certain things you just gotta get judged for, and God's not gonna let you get around. Uh what the heck? Second Ezra eight, give me a second. Uh eight. Second Ezra, chapter eight and verse fifty-four. Sorrows are past. And in the end, it showed the treasure of immortality. And that, when he says, lest he hold the tree of life and live forever. Lest he hold the tree of life and live forever. So he says, sorrow's passed away. This is the kingdom. Uh, and in the end, is the show of the treasure of immortality. That's grabbing onto his commandments. Now watch this. Go to 2 Ezra 2. Two and twelve, and we're gonna read a lot of Ezra's today. <clears throat> the book of Second Ezra, chapter two and verse twelve. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. You know what? When you grab up to the tree of life, these commandments, it says, uh, they shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. The ointment it meaning a blessing upon you. Um they shall neither labor nor weary. When you grab onto the tree of life, these commandments, God said, you're not going to labor nor weary anymore. Because remember, the kingdom, what happened? Adam didn't have to work or nothing. The entrance was wide and short. You didn't have to do nothing for it. What happened? We got complacent. Now God said, nah. Now you got to overcome to get it. Not giving it away no more. I gave it to you before you didn't know what to do with it the last time. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.